Hello everybody and welcome to the new episode of Open Form Application Training. Today we will talk about Extrude to Dmesh, which is very nice and a handsome tool. If you don't know the tool already, you have to watch this small um, training video. Uh, my name is Tobias Holzmann and yeah, let's directly start. Um, as the name already um, mentioned, it is an application for building 2D meshes and the geometry I'm using is the solar chimney published on my webpage. So this one quarter of the 3D gym domain should be simulated in 2D and I show you how to make the 2D mesh by using um, the extrude 2D mesh application. Of course there is also the extrude mesh application but with this application you cannot make the things that I want to show you now. For the purpose I made already a test case which has all, almost nothing. It has the geometry included which can be downloaded from the web page. Um, and it has the system folder, control dig, FE schemes and solution. I'm not 100% sure of if we need them, but normally applications are checking if these three files are available here. And then the extrude to dmesh dictionary, which will actually control our um, application. To use the mesh, um, this application, we need a surface mesh. And the surface mesh, we will just extrude from the STL file from this one. So just let me give you uh, the keys that you can follow me, what I'm doing here. So I just select uh, the front patch. I put it into a new object. I remove the old one and voila, we have the triangulated surface, right? So what I'm doing now is I save first, I save and cut blender, I save this blender stuff and then I save this surface as an object file. Um, you can name it whatever you would like to name it. And then we will directly build our mesh. So what we did, we get now this blender file and these two, the MTL file can be deleted directly. And what we are using now is extrude. to the mesh and then we will get um, the usage the options are given here and the surface format if you don't know any surface format you just put some stupid name and then you you, you get the information of these two um, yeah um, surface format formats which can be used here if you don't know what this uh, stands for you have to go to the source code um, in our case, we use the mesh surface. Yeah. And now it tells us, oh yeah, hmm. uh, it cannot read the mesh surface object because we don't have it here, but we want to use the blender object. So we use the blender object and we make a symbolic link. So the mesh surface object points to blender object. And then we use the extrude mesh again, this application. And now we get our 2D mesh. As you can see, it is writing a new time folder, one, zero point, uh, one to the power minus five. And here we have our poly mesh folder. I just remove it again. And if you use override as an argument, you get the same stuff, but now it is put 
into constant poly mesh. That means if you have a poly mesh folder already available, it will be overwritten. If you check out the mesh, it looks like the following. It looks like the triangulated mesh we we extracted, so it's like the triangulated surface, but now extruded with two layers in set direction, and it's everywhere, right? So this is controlled by the extrude mesh dictionary. have to remove the swap guy and as you can see here now um, the extrusion model is linear direction the patch types will become empty so constant poly mesh boundary so the front and back patch types gets empty we have two layers that we saw the expansion rate is one so you and see in which direction at the sickness, right? So nothing special. Um, if you want just to have an axisymmetric um, extrusion, you are just using something like this. So we extrude around y-axis on x point zero, angle of fin five. And if you do so, it will complain you that keyword axis point is undefined. I realized this that there is a small bug, so this is not working here. And voila! The mesh is now 2D rotational axis symmetric. Yeah, very nice, isn't it? And now, more advanced stuff. Now you know how to use it. We go back to Blender. We load. We load, we load, we load. This one. And in Blender, you could now do the following. In the edit mode, you make subdivide. And you see, we get much more elements here. We subdivide again. And if you export this as object file and extrude this, you will get a much finer mesh. So if now you use Alt J, this mesh gets completely different because Blender tries to remove tetraeders or these triangles and changes in, into this style. Very interesting. So now you can export it again. And then do the same. Just extrude it with extrude to D mesh. What we get is a very interesting and very fine mesh, right? So of course you can use triangles or whatever you have if it's in your object file. So that's everything what I want to tell you about this application. The only problem which you could see is that we get here a front and back patch, but all other patches are in this default patch. To set now boundary conditions for defined, so if, if this is a wall or an inlet, an outlet, so you have no chance to do th that. But for this, you can just type auto patch and read through, and it will generate automatically patches based on, on the setup you had. And you can see it here. We get here different patches and
it is split in a way you set up the application. Last information. If you're searching for the uh, extrude 2D mesh dictionary, you have to go to utilities to mesh generation extrude 2D mesh. And then here you have the extrude 2D mesh dictionary, which you can copy to your system folder. So that's everything about this smart application. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something which will help for your further work. And I thank you for watching, enjoying, and I hope you follow me, share my work, uh, leave a comment or whatever. I wish you a very nice time and see you soon. Bye-bye. All the best from my side.